You won't believe that this creature actually exists on our planet. Out of all the creatures made by God, this one stands above them all. Its name is Leviathan, an enormous, armored, and destructive sea monster whose identity and existence is surrounded in mystery. Some say Leviathan is too horrifying to ever exist. It must have been a metaphoric concept, but I believe there is biblical evidence pointing towards the existence of such a beast, because the word Leviathan in Hebrew appears a total of five times in Old Testament passages, and hidden among them are two good reasons to believe this monster actually existed. 1. Leviathan's Creation Isaiah 27 has a single verse that mentions Leviathan twice, and the word dragon is used to describe it. That word dragon translates in Hebrew to the word tanin. Now when God created the creatures of the sea on the fifth day, the term sea creatures translates to taninim, which happens to be the plural of Tanin. This could potentially mean that God created not only fish, but larger, scarier creatures to roam the depths with them. Number two, Leviathan's description. At the end of the book of Job, we get an entire chapter dedicated to the Leviathan in all its glory, but the description given seems far too detailed to be a mere metaphor. Who can strip off its outer coat? Who can penetrate its double coat of armor? Who dares open the doors of its mouth, ringed about with fearsome teeth? Its back has rows of shields tightly sealed together. Strength resides in its neck. Its chest is as hard as rock. Its undersides are jagged like potsherds. If Leviathan does truly exist, what exactly is it? And where is it now? There are many theories as to Leviathan's true identity. The first is the idea that Leviathan was an ancient crocodile. Though much of the language used to describe Leviathan is translated as serpent, some have assigned the crocodile the closest match to the Leviathan's description. The armored skin, large jaws, and many teeth. It's not a perfect match, however, as the description of Leviathan goes further than just the armor. Any hope of subduing it is false. No one is fierce enough to rouse it. The sword that reaches it has no effect, nor does the spear or the dart or the javelin. We see seen man tame crocodiles throughout history. There are even Egyptian paintings that portray the hunting of crocodiles in the ancient Near East. The Leviathan, however, is portrayed as an uncontrollable monster. But not only that, flames stream from its mouth, sparks of fire shoot out, its breath sets coals ablaze, and flames dart from its mouth. These descriptions don't fit our modern day crocodile very well, but the next theory may have a little more biblical support, the Revelation theory. Some theorize that Leviathan is actually the beast of the sea spoken of in Revelation. Revelation 13 states that Satan, the dragon, awaits for the appearance of a monster from the sea. When they meet, Satan grants him power and authority enough to capture the respect of all the people on earth. They also worshipped the beast and asked, who is like the beast? Who can wage war against it? Further evidence is found in two other passages which details God punishing and killing Leviathan in some form of judgment. Though Leviathan and the beast of the sea share the same intimidation and power among men, there are some notable differences. The beast of the sea is described as having the form of a leopard with feet like a bear and a mouth like a lion, a stark contrast to the description in Job. The the relationship between God and Leviathan is another reason to think it's not the beast of the sea in Revelation. God describes Leviathan as something he is proud of, a fearsome creature that can bring any man to his knees. Due to a difference in original language, we can't confirm whether the same word is used to describe Leviathan and the beast in Revelation, so the theory may still be plausible. The final theory is that Leviathan was a monster that has since gone extinct. The description of Leviathan doesn't point directly to any creature we know of today, but it is possible that there was once a creature of its description roaming the earth. Some have speculated it was an ancient dinosaur, Kronosaurus, Plesiosaurus, or the Sarcorsakis Imperator are three of the common guesses. Nonetheless, Leviathan is undoubtedly an unstoppable force of nature. But why is it even in scripture in the first place? Psalm 104 verse 25 to 27 says, There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things both large and small. There the ships go to and fro, and Leviathan, which you form to frolic there. And here's the key. All creatures look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. What this means is God has complete control over Leviathan. 
God is the one who tells Job of Leviathan in Job 41, and he does it for a single reason, to humble him. Like Job, we look at our creator and try to argue our case. We reason to God how we've been unfairly treated and what God needs to do to fix it. But in reality, who are we to speak to God at all? The same God who created and nurtured Leviathan has created and nurtured us. The only difference between man and Leviathan is Leviathan always fell under the authority of its creator. Let this be a lesson to us today. Do not put the Lord your God to the test.